Meet Zuri. Every morning before school, her mom gives her a choice of taking only two types of fruits to school. Today, there's apple, banana, and pear on the table. Zuri can choose any two fruits to take in her lunchbox today. Zuri is curious. How many different pairs of fruits could she possibly take to school? Zuri begins to think of all the possible pairs of fruits that she can choose. She could take apple and banana, or apple and pear, or banana and pear. Zuri suddenly realizes that this is related to the same topic she is doing at school. Combinations. Since the order of the fruits doesn't matter, meaning that choosing apple and banana is the same combination as banana and apple. So Zuri has three combinations of fruits that she can put in her lunch bag. Now, what other method could Zuri have used to determine the number of ways that she can choose two fruits from a total of three fruits? We'll look at two methods, the box method and the formula. In the box method, we list out the total number of object we are to choose from. In this case, three items, apple, banana, and pear. We are choosing only two of the items, so we put only two boxes. Let's put a fruit in each box. How many choices do we have for the first box? Any of the three fruits can be placed in the first box, so we put down three. Once a fruit is placed into the first box, ask ourselves how many choices do we have for the second box? That's two choices, since one of the three fruits would have already been placed in the first box. So we write two. Now, a critical thing you need to understand about this method is that multiplying the numbers in the boxes will give you all the possible arrangements of the two items that you are choosing in every possible order, as is shown here. A total of six possible arrangements. However, this is double counting, since, for example, apple and banana is the same as banana and apple. In other words, the order is not important, since Zuri's only concern is that she has a combination of two fruits in her bag. So to avoid double counting, we need to divide by the number of ways that each combination can be arranged. That's two factorial, since each combination has two items. So, the number of possible combinations of fruits is 3 times 2, divide by 2 factorial. This gives us 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. The same number of arrangements Zuri got when she listed them. This gives rise to the combinations formula seen here. Since the order of the fruits doesn't matter, this is a combination problem. In the formula n choose r, n represents the total number of items we're choosing from, while r represents the exact number of items we are choosing. In this case, the total number of items is 3, since Zuri is choosing from a total of 3 fruits, while r is 2, since she is meant to be choosing exactly 2 fruits. So after making the substitutions n equals 3, and r equals 2. We get 3 factorial, which is 6, over 1 times 2 factorial, which is 2. So our solution is 6 over 2, which is equal to 3, the same number of combinations we found in the previous methods. Now contrast Zuri's case with Beth's case. Beth gets a phone as a gift. She wants to set a two-digit PIN number from three digits, which are extremely special to her. They are 7, 8, and 9. Beth is considering all the different possibilities she can use as her PIN. Beth realizes that she can use any of six pairs of digits as her PIN. This time, the order matters. Since, for example, 78 is not the same as 87, and so on, so this is a permutation problem. Again, we can use either the box method or a formula to determine the number of two-digit PIN that Beth can create from the three digits, 7, 8, and 9. In the box method, we will use two boxes for the two-digit PIN. 
The first box has three choices. That's seven, eight, or nine. Once a digit goes into the first box, the second box has two remaining choices. Multiply the values in the box to get the total number of pin codes. That's three times two equals six. So six unique pin codes can be created, even though the same digits are repeated. We can use all six pin codes since the order for each is different. This gives rise to the permutation formula for selecting R items from a total of N items when the order of the selected items is important. So replacing N with 3 and R with 2. N P R becomes 3 P 2. That's 3 factorial over 1 factorial, which is 6. The same amount Beth got when she listed them. Let's look at another problem. Imagine you have a group of seven students training for a quiz competition, and you need to choose four. No specific roles, just four students to represent the school. This is a combination problem because the order doesn't matter. Whether Amy, Ben, Kathy, and Dave are listed in that order or reversed, it's still the same team. So how do we calculate this? We can use the box method or the formula. With the box method, we put four slots since a team should consist of four persons. We are choosing the team from a total of seven persons. So in the first slot, we have seven choices. Once a student is placed in the first box, six students remain. So we have six choices for the second box. Two students are now placed in boxes which means we are down to five choices for the third box. With three students now placed, we only have four choices for the fourth box. If the order was important, the number of four member teams that can be formed from the seven students would be the product of the numbers in the boxes. Seven times, six times, five times. Four equals 840 teams. But since order doesn't matter, we've overcounted. This is because any four persons selected from the group has four factorial permutations, which are included in the 840 teams. For example, persons A, B, C, D can be arranged as A, C, B, D or B, A, C, D, and so on, all of which are included in the 840 teams. Although these are different permutations in terms of order, they are the same combination of students, so same team. So, to correct this overcounting, we need to divide by 4 factorial, which is 24. So the number of unique 4-member quiz team that can be formed from the 7 students is 840 over 24, which is 35. If we are using the formula, we can substitute 7 for n and 4 for r. So 7c4 is 7 factorial over 3 factorial times 4 factorial. We get the same answer, 35 teams. By the way, on the calculator you can enter 7, then the NCR button, then 4, then the equal sign, and you should get 35. Now let's look at a final problem. Again, we have 7 students, but this time, we're choosing a four-member executive committee with specific roles – president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. How many unique committees can be formed? This time, order matters. Why? Because being the president is very different from being the secretary. So, this is a permutation problem. Let's use the box method again. There are seven choices for president then six choices left for vice president, then five for secretary, and four choices remain for treasurer. That gives us seven times, six times five times four equals 840 permutations. So 840 unique four member executive committees can be formed. If we are using a formula, it's NPR, since we are picking a group of people to put into specific roles. So we replace N with 7 and replace R with 4. 
that's 7 factorial over 3 factorial, which is 840. The same value when we use the box method. Let's recap. Use combinations when the order doesn't matter, like choosing fruits to go to school, or picking a team where specific positions or roles don't matter. Use permutations when positions or roles matter, like selecting officers, for specific posts. Now that you have a foundation in the concept, we'll look at a few tricky problems in the next video. If this video helped you understand permutations versus combinations a little better, hit that like button, subscribe, and share with a friend. See you soon.